Hey guys, I've had a lot of people asking how I cover stirrups, and they're kind of complicated, and you can spend a lot of time building stirrups, and they're just, it's just what they are. You've got lots of parts, lots of time, so they're not my favorite thing to do, but they really, really look good, on, especially on a rope and saddle or something like that. Almost all the time, you're going to have to cover them. So if you're interested in learning how to cover these stirrups, watch this video, and I'll go through the entire process on what I use and, um, and how, how I cover them. You will need a stirrup plate for a sewing machine or you can sew them by hand. So if you don't have that or don't have a sewing machine, which most people, most people do, but if you don't, you can sew these by hand and they're not that bad. It's not like sewing a skirt or something. But um, but I'll, if you are going to sew them on a sewing machine, you will usually need a stirrup plate and I'll show you what that looks like in the video. But it's just got a riser on it and so that it, when you're sewing on a machine, it's, it raises your material up and you can basically guide that stirrup you're actually hitting the actual stirrup in there as you're sewing along. But that's really the only thing special that you're going to need as far as tools go would be that unless you're going to sew them by hand. Also on my stirrups, whenever I build them, I use almost solely I use nettle stirrups. And um, they just, to me, the blanks from them are the best, they're the cleanest. Um, I haven't had very many issues with stirrups over the years, maybe had three or four broke out of 300 something saddles. I've only had three or four of these stirrups break. Um, and it's usually from an accident or, you know, something like that, the horse falling on it or, or getting caught in a trailer door or something like that. But their stirrups don't have the metal binding on them like the stirrups you get from Weaver or some of these other companies, which those are fine. I have no problems with those and that binding actually gives them a little bit more strength. Um, but I prefer the cleanness of the actual final stirrup without that metal in there. And so if you're going to do that without the metal, nettles would be the only one that I would recommend because they know how to build the stirrups that way out of wood to where they won't break um, because that metal binding is actually what helps to keep that bolt in there. So anyway, I'm going to show you this video uh, or in the video how to build these stirrups. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, like I said, they are a little bit more complicated than most people realize till they get into it, but hopefully my way is a little easier and uh, something that anybody can give it a shot and try to cover a pair. So let's check out the video and let me know what y'all think. Okay, so here's all of our stirrup outside pieces. Now these pieces, you're gonna have two for the inside and two for the outside, so one for each stirrup, and I only tool the outside pieces. And there you can see my nettles blanks, and uh, like I said, they're in Madisonville, they make a really nice, clean, all wooden stirrup, there's no galvanized binding, and all the parts glue really well. Now that there is my tooling window pattern, and basically whatever style of stirrup that you're using that you're going to cover then I just trace the outside of half of that stirrup so that I know where the edge of my stirrup is going to be. And I put just a little mark right there as it turns under so I know where to stop my tooling. Then I'll take my stirrup outside piece and I usually come down about an inch to lay that pattern and I'll put that and I just kind of center it up on my pattern. So if you're doing a bell stirrup or something, that pattern is going to look different. But you're just, it's simply just tracing the outside edge of the stirrup. And that line that we draw on there, that's going to be where the tooling needs to stop. So if you're running a border or you're doing anything like that, all of that's got to be within those marks. So you can see there the pattern covers my tooling completely. And uh, you're going to stitch right outside of the tooling there. So if you're going to use a border or something, don't run your border outside of that line. So here I've just got my, my second outside piece for the other stirrup. And I've cased it. And now I've carved the first one first. That's usually what I do. I'll draw one side, carve it up, let it dry real good. And then case the second one for the other stirrup. And uh, I go ahead and put them together and just make a tap off of it. I'm just kind of checking it before I move it, make sure I hit everything good enough. And so as you can see there, now my pattern's completely transferred to the other side. If you're going to do a brand or something, you'll have to, you know, make adjustments or maybe use tracing paper. Okay, so here we've got our liner pieces. And I use a, a 3 to 4 ounce lining leather or veg tan leather. Um, you can go a little bit heavier, but the heavier you go, the harder it gets to actually cover, put these liners on the inside of the stirrup. So, and there I'm just skiving down the very bottom edge, and you'll see why here in just a minute. But I just take that down to a nice feather edge right there along the bottom of them. Now I'm just going to put my stirrup on there, and I try to keep, you know, an inch, inch and a quarter somewhere around the top. 
make me a mark where the bolt is going to come through and then center that up. Then I just punch a number 10 hole that's just big enough for that carriage bolt to fit through there. And we'll kind of put it in there and you see how much I've got out the top. We need quite a bit so we can form it around that stirrup. And here I'm just putting glue. I'm going to put glue on all of my liners and I'm going to put it on, on the inside of the stirrup. So I basically do the inside of the stirrup and then the edge, the uh, outer edge of them, all the wood all the way around. So as I pull that leather down around the shape of the stirrup, I want it to stick really good. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to do two good coats, letting, letting each coat dry, coat dry in between. Once those coats of glue have dried really good on the liners, then I'm going to take two of them at a time. I'm going to put them in my sink and get them nice and wet. And then I'll take a paper towel and dry that, dry all the water off of the glue. If you put glue on first and then let that dry and then put it in the water, it'll actually, the glue will maintain its, its ability to stick. And so then you can still case up your, your work and not have wait time in between. And as I pull that on there, I'll start there at the bend of that stirrup first and kind of stretch that in and then work the sides. And as you can see, it's sticking really, really good to the side edge of the stirrup. And see that top, we need quite a bit of that to have enough room to come around there. And then I'm just taking my rub stick and just working out any wrinkles and getting a good rub there on the wood so that that leather sticks really good everywhere. And be sure and get a good, um, a good contact there in that well where the stirrup bends, bends around. And that way, it doesn't try to drum across there as that leather dries. So it's really important to get good two good coats of glue on here so that it'll stick really good. So we're using, when we put those liners in there, we're using that hole that we made for the bolt to go through. We're just lining that up with a hole in the stirrup. And You've got to get your pattern set so that as you bring that around inside there, that you want them to overlap in the middle of the stirrup. So where the tread would go, we want them to overlap. As you can see in that stirrup there, they're, they're overlapping. Now where they overlap, that's why we skive the bottom of those liners down, is so that as they overlap, it doesn't make a big bump right there in the middle of the stirrup where the ball of your foot will be. And then I'm just going to put my bolt back in here. This is, kind of takes a trick. You'll have to kind of figure out your way of doing it. but. Um, once you get it kind of going in there and put all your washers back where they're supposed to go and that kind of thing. And then we're going to put the nut back on and we're going to tighten it down as tight as we can get it. That pipe or conduit spacer in there should keep you from over tightening that, but just keep an eye on your liners. That's pretty thin. And when you get to really cranking on that nut, sometimes it'll try to tear through the liner. So just don't shove that washer all the way through. Now I'm going to take my bolt cutters and I'm going to cut the, any excess of that carriage bolt off as close as I can to the nut. And then we grind them down. I grind it smooth to the, uh, to the actual nut so it's smooth. And then I come over to my anvil and I'm just going to go where the nut and the bolt meet inside there where the nut's screwed on. I go ahead, and that's ground down real smooth. I go ahead and take a peening tool and just put me some peens along where those threads are where they meet the nut. And this will kind of mush it out and keep that nut from just wiggling off over time. Okay, so these are t the two blank outside pieces for our stirrups. And I'm just skiving down where that nut's going to be because that nut's thicker than the carriage bolt side or the, or the other the head side. So I want to kind of make a little well for that nut to sit in there so it doesn't bulge out as much. Now kind of the same thing we did for our liners. We're going to put glue on our tool tool outside pieces and our two, two blank in uh, outside pieces and we're going to put glue all over them and put glue all over the wood the outside of the wood of our stirrup now our liners have good glue on them so you don't have to worry too much about getting glue on them because they should be still really sticky but i want to get two good coats on all the outside pieces and the wood now here when you've got tooling on there you've got to work to try to figure out a system for you. For me, I can kind of sight down and look, and I'm looking at my tooling, and as I'm looking down there, I'm just trying to line it up, and the tooling should match the stirrup shape because that's what we use as our pattern. And it kind of takes a little practice to, to get them stuck um, and lined up. I suggest kind of barely putting them on there just enough and then checking them with your candle pliers to just make sure they're lined up with the outside of your stirrup. 
into the tool and straight before you press everything down because that glue two coats of that's going to be really sticky and if they're not where you want them it's going to be really hard to get them off and then I just cut straight across down the middle of the stirrup and now we're going to glue that on there go ahead and press it all in now I'm going to take those outside pieces and remember we scived a little area there and that's for that that nut so it has a place to sit there so that it's not causing quite as much of a bump. You're still going to have a pretty good bump compared to the other side but this kind of helps it to lay a little little bit flat. And then I just use the one we just put on, I use that as my marks and draw a line and then cut this other side so that they meet up. You want to try to cut this as straight as you can so that when you glue that down those two, that seam right there is as straight and tight as it can get so that that way you don't have any kind of opening in there because over time that will show through your tread from foot going in and out of there. Then I like to hammer it down really good and make sure that we got that leather stuck to the wood really good. And then I take my candle pliers and get a good crimp all the way around. I'm bumping the actual stirrup as I go in so I know. This will also leave a mark on the outside. You can check your tooling with that mark make sure that you're not crimping over the top of your tooling. As you can see we're lined up pretty good. Okay so here on my sewing machine you can see that stirrup foot. It's just that plate is just raised up enough so it basically takes up the, the thickness of that stirrup and so when we sew our stirrups we're just going to shove the stirrup in and basically the stirrup will ride on the outside of that foot and then if you hold a little tension towards your machine on the on the actual material or the stirrup you can just ride it all the way around and it'll it'll sew exactly where you want it which is basically just following the contour of your stirrup if you're doing a bell stirrup or something like that, sometimes you got to be a little bit more mindful. But on these roper stirrups, it's pretty well straight line, so you just got to hold it up against that plate. And like I said, you can sew them by hand. It's just uh, it's pretty handy if you can get a, pre a plate for your machine if you do have a sewing machine. And usually the plates are 150 bucks, but they're well worth it. And just sew all the way around in one one swipe. Now here I'm just going to cut my stitches. I try to start and end at the bottom of my stirrup because I'm going to cover any of that over stitch with a, uh, with a tread so you won't see those. And you can see how much excess I've got on my stirrup. You always want to leave yourself plenty of feather. Now I'm going to cut that off. My machine, you can set calipers, calipers to follow around your tooling and set you a cut line. My machine's kind of handy actually. I don't like the presser foot because it's kind of big and bulky, but on this stirrup, when I'm sewing stirrups it's actually pretty help, uh, handy because it leaves kind of a light presser foot mark on there and one it's a walking foot so the inside foot it actually leaves a mark that's perfect distance away from my stitches that I want to cut so that's the line I'm following there I'm not just freehand in that I'm actually following the marks my presser foot left on there and they're not bad marks it's just just enough where I can see it and it helps me to cut those out now you may have seen another video that we did that shows you how to put stirrup treads on so I'm not gonna go too deep into that I'm gonna go pretty quick but I'll put a link in the description for that video if you haven't seen it yet I do show you exactly how I put my treads on and I start with my half inch lace with a bag punch in the end and um, I've got my treads there and some saddle soap to put on the lace now these stirrups have all been sanded edged and slicked and dyed I do that to all the stirrups. the treads are one of the last thing that we put on there so I do all the all the edge work on them so they're ready to go and like I said, we've there's a more, another video that's a little bit more expansive on how I actually do this, but you know, we're just fitting the tread. My my tread pattern is a little bit oversized, so it'll fit almost all the stirrups that I that I cover. I don't have to make any adjustments. I just cut off the excess and make them meet up. There, I'm just making some new cuts. As you can see there, I leave a pretty good gap in there. I leave probably a quarter inch space in between where my treads meet so when I pull that lacing tight for the stirrup tread it'll it'll pull it together and it'll keep that tread nice and tight on the bottom of the stirrup. And I like to use saddle soap. Um, it just seems to help your, your lace run through the leather a lot easier and uh, allows you to get it get that lace pulled down tight so that it's snug in your stirrup tread. If you do if you leave it kind of loose that stirrup tread once it gets broke in and it won't take long that stirrup tread will just it'll be able to kind of walk all over that stirrup and 
I don't know if it's dangerous, but it's sure annoying when you're riding in a saddle with a stirrup tread that's loose or tore or something like that. It's pretty annoying. So these are our bolt covers. All they do is protect your stirrup leather from the uh, metal of the bolt that's going through your stirrup. So I just glue mine on. I don't put a rivet or any kind of lace or anything. All they're doing is there just to cover that metal. And that's plenty. So I really hope this, this video was informational. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, hit that like button and the subscribe button if you haven't already to get more of the videos that we turn out. Uh, if you know somebody that might be interested in it, we sure appreciate you sharing this video on Facebook or Instagram or uh, just shooting somebody a link and let them check it out. Uh, we have more videos coming up. If you've got any suggestions or you got a problem that you're having in leather work and you want me to kind of go through it, if it's something that I can be better off doing a video of, that's the way I've been kind of doing it. And more questions I get, I got a bunch of questions on how to cover stirrups, so I made a video on it. Uh, that's kind of what I'm doing. So if you've got anything, Hit us, uh, hit us up on, on our email address and shoot us, a, shoot us an email, put YouTube Q&A in there, and that way I'll know what it is and we'll try to get some more of those going. Thank you all very much.